jetzt mit einem Gebet. Lieber himmlischer Vater, thank you for this new day. danke für diesen neuen Tag. And thank you for awakening us. Danke, dass du uns aufgeweckt hast. Und danke auch für die Gedanken, die du uns über das Buch Daniel gegeben hast. danke auch für die Gedanken, die du uns über das Buch Daniel gegeben hast. Wir bitten und beten, dass du uns jetzt hilfst, dass diese Dinge in unsere Erinnerung kommen. We need now continue with this subject. Wenn wir mit diesem Thema fortfahren. That we would be able to follow and receive that which you have for us this day. Dass wir in der Lage sind zu folgen und das zu erhalten, was du für uns an diesem Tag hast. Please give us the golden oil that you've promised. Bitte gib uns das goldene Öl, was du verheißen hast. Please bless Brother Mark as he lays out his thoughts. Und segne Bruder Mark, wenn er seine Gedanken auslegt. The translation. Und auch die Übersetzung. Please bless the technique. Und bitte segne die Technik. Everyone who's watching. Und jeder, der zuschaut. Invite your presence and thank you in Jesus' name. Wir laden deine Gegenwart ein und danken dir in Jesu Namen. Amen. Amen. Technik ist nicht Englisch. Technik ist nicht Englisch. Okay, go to, go to Daniel 9. Gehen wir zu Daniel 9. Vers 2. Und Vers 2. Wir haben uns das gestern Abend angeschaut. I just want to make some, um, comments on this point. Ich möchte über diesen Punkt ein paar Kommentare machen. Es says, in the, the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of uh, Jerusalem. So, Jer uh, sorry, Daniel here is reading about these 70 years from the book of Jeremiah, and we looked at this last night. Daniel uh, liest jetzt von diesen, über diese 70 Jahre von dem Buch Jeremia, und das haben wir uns gestern Abend angeschaut. Okay. And Those two periods of 70 years are all linked to, Jeho the, to Jehoiakim. Und diese zwei Zeitspannen der 70 Jahre sind alle mit Jehoiakim verbunden. Okay, so the first year of Jehoiakim, he makes an oath with them, and in the third year, he breaks that oath. Im ersten Jahr von Jehoiakim macht er ein Bündnis mit ihm, und dann im dritten Jahr ähm, bricht er diesen Bündnis. Okay, these two years, the first and the third year, are when these two 70 year prophecies Begin. Und diese zwei Jahre, also das erste Jahr und das dritte Jahr, da fangen jeweils diese äh, zwei 70 Jahre an. But when you go to the book of Leviticus 26 and Second Chronicles, it's marking from the destruction of Jerusalem 70 years. Und wenn man zum Buch Zweiter Chronik geht oder Dritter Mose, dann markiert es diese 70 Jahre von der Zerstörung Jerusalems. Okay, but we know that the Those two 70 years in the book of Jeremiah are both referencing the the Sunday law crisis. Right? Wir wissen, dass yeah. diese zwei 70 Jahre vom Buch Jeremia sich auf diese Sonntagsgesetzkrise beziehen. Okay, one leads you to the destruction of Babylon, the other one leads you to the restoration of his people. Die eine führt dich zu der Zerstörung von Babylon und die andere zu der Wiederherstellung seines Volkes. So, they're both. Part, line upon line, they're the same time period. One is the blessing, one is the curse. Und Linie auf Linie sind sie beide dieselbe Zeitspanne und das eine ist der Segen, das andere der Fluch. Okay, but when you go to Leviticus 26, you have these four, seven times, and then it's followed by 70 years in captivity, and that's like confusing, right? Und wenn man zu Dritter Mose 26 geht, da hat man diese vier mal sieben Zeiten und ähm, dann diese äh, Destruction. Then 70 years ah, und dann diese 70 Jahre Gefangenschaft und das ist eben etwas verwirrend. Okay, so we have to understand these things in a in its spiritual symbolic fashion. Right? Wir sollen diese Dinge um, symbolisch, also geistlich verstehen. And the point is that the destruction of Jerusalem marks the seven last plagues. That's when they're 
poured out. Der Punkt ist, dass diese uh, die Zerstörung Jerusalems markiert die sieben letzten Plagen, wenn sie ausgegossen werden. Okay, so when we look at the 70 years here, what do we have parallel in it? Also wenn wir hier die 70 Jahre anschauen, mit was haben wir das parallel? The, the, the seven plagues, right? Den sieben Plagen. So you can see that the the 70 years uh, captivity and the seven plagues that they are a parallel uh, thought. Also right? da können wir sehen, wie diese 70 Jahre Gefangenschaft und die sieben Plagen ein Parallelgedanke ist. Okay, so the Lord is trying to teach us that you know if you don't um, if we don't repent in the time of, of the Sunday Lord Christ, then the seven last plagues is coming upon you. And that's what really what those 70 years point to. It's an uh, eternal separation from God. Und das will der Herr uns lehren, dass wenn wir in dieser Sonntagsgesetzkrise nicht Buße tun, dann werden diese sieb, äh, sieben Plagen auf uns kommen. Und das, ist eben, das stellen eben diese 70 Jahre da, diese ewige Trennung von Gott. Okay, so, but it's also a blessing. Aber es ist auch ein Segen. And it just remind us of this point, if you go to um, Ezekiel 17. <lacht> Und um uns an diesen Punkt zu erinnern, gehen wir zu Ezekiel 17. Which historically... Right, it's marking the beginning of 70 years. Historisch gesehen markiert es den Anfang der 70 Jahre. Okay, in verse one. Vers 1. It says, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, put forth a riddle, speak a parable unto the house of Israel, and say thus, saith the Lord, a great eagle with great wings, long winged, full of feathers, which had diverse colours, came unto Lebanon and took the highest branch of the cedar. He cropped off the top of his young twigs and carried them into a land of traffic and set it in the city of merchants. Right? So, that's Nebuchadnezzar taking Jehoiakim and the and planting him here, which is, represents the blessing. Right? Das heißt hier, das ist jetzt Jehoiakim, der jetzt ähm, diese Kinder also, äh, von Judah ähm, gefangen nimmt. Und, äh, He's pl planting. Is Nebuchadnezzar ah. taking Jehoiakim and the children and planting okay. them there? Also, it's Nebuchadnezzar, the Jehoiakim and the children, gefangen nimmt and he plants them here. Okay, it's the blessing, it's the new birth. It's right? the Segen, the new birth. Okay, so you see that the 70 years, right, it, depending on the context of it, is either in the Sunday law, typifying, right, or it's representing this seven last plagues or the blessing at, at the end. Right. Also die 70 Jahre können wir jetzt sehen, basierend auf dem Kontext, ähm, zeigt entweder das Sonntagsgesetz, wo das vorausgeschattet wird, oder hier ähm, diese, dieser Segen oder eben diese sieben letzten Plagen. Okay, and Jeremiah is a prophet, right? Und Jeremia ist ein Prophet. Uh, sorry, Daniel is a prophet. Und Daniel ist ein Prophet. And Daniel understands spiritual things, right? Daniel versteht geistliche Dinge. And Daniel is in captivity, right? Daniel is in Gefangenschaft. So if he's in captivity, what work should he be doing? Also wenn er in Gefangenschaft ist, welches Werk sollte er tun? The work that it told him to do in Leviticus 26, if he goes into captivity, das right? Das Werk, was gesagt wurde, was sie tun sollten, wenn sie in Gefangenschaft gehen, und das ist in 3. Mose 26. Okay, to sign, cry for all... The, the, his sins and the sins of his fathers, right? Dass sie seufzen und klagen sollen für all ihre Sünden und die Sünden ihrer Väter. Okay, and so he starts to do that work there in verse 3, right? Und er fängt jetzt an, dieses Werk zu tun, da in 9, Vers 3. And if we go to verse 4, dann gehen wir jetzt zu Vers 4. It says, And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. Right? So, there's several other witnesses for this prayer that Daniel makes here. Da gibt es viele andere Zeugen noch für das Gebet, was Daniel hier macht. And here, when Daniel begins, he says, O Lord, the great and dreadful God. Hier, wenn Daniel jetzt anfängt zu beten, da sagt er, O oh Herr, der große und ähm, schreckliche Herr. Right, but if you go to Nehemiah chapter 1. Wenn ihr aber zu Nehemiah 1 geht. In 
verse 5. In fact, let's begin in verse 1. Fangen wir in Nehemiah 1, Vers 1 an. It says, the words of Nehemiah, the son of uh, Hakaliah, and it came to pass in the month Chislu, in the 20th year, I was in Shushan, the palace, right? So it's three places in the Bible that it marks Shushan, right? It's all related to this experience. Okay, so um, in verse 4. And it came to pass, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. And I said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God. What does he call him? The great and terrible God, right? Now Daniel called him the dreadful God. He's calling him a terrible God, right? Also Daniel had in a Right. It says that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. So he's quoting now Leviticus 26. Also er zitiert jetzt 3. Mose 26. Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant which I pray before thee now day and night. What's he doing? Was macht er? Day and night. So where is he? Right, yes. Okay. Um, for the children of Israel, thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. So what's he praying? The prayers, the prayer according to Leviticus 26, right? Das Gebet gemäß 3. Mose 26. And when he goes through this prayer, right, if you come down to verse 11, the last verse in this chapter. Wenn er jetzt durch dieses Gebet geht, wenn wir jetzt zu Vers 11 gehen. It says, O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy servants who desire to fear thy name and prosper. I pray thee, thy servant, this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cupbearer. So he's asking for mercy because he's the cupbearer, right? Der bittet jetzt um Gnade, weil er ähm, dieser Mundschenk oder What does that bring you back to? Zu was Joseph. bringt uns das? Oh, the story of Joseph, right? Zu der Geschichte von Josef. The baker and the butler, right? Der Bäcker und der Mundschenk. Because when the butler was restored, what did he do? Als der Mundschenk wiederhergestellt wurde, was hat er getan? He would put the cup into the king's hand, right? Er hat den Kelch in die Hand des Königs gebracht. Okay, and verse 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 1. Jetzt Kapitel 2, Vers 1. It says, And it came to pass in the month Nisan, in the twentieth year of Artaxerxes the king, that wine was before him, and I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. Mm -hmm. Right, so you see that when he prays this prayer and he's restored, he's now given the king the cup, right? You can see, when he this prayer und jetzt wieder hergestellt wird, da gibt er eben diesen Kelch. Right, and the cup is the third angel's message. Und der right? Kelch ist die dritte Engelsbotschaft. It's, when they all stand before the king, right, it's all here, and they're warning them about this third war that's about to come, right? Wenn sie alle hier stehen, ist es eben hier, und sie warnen sie jetzt bei der, dieser dritten Wehe, die kurz davor ist zu kommen. R right? No, no, so I, they, were me. they stand here and they warn about this, right? That's always the same, right? Okay, and just for reference sake, if we go to the book of Ezra, right, and if we go to um, chapter 9, Verse 5. Verse 5. Now, Ezra is praying here because he hears about the mixed 
marriages or the strange wives, right? Und Ezra erbetet hier, weil er über diese vermischten Ehen hört, also diese ähm, fremden Frauen. Okay. It says, and at the evening sacrifice, I rose up from my heaviness, and having rent my garment and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord my God, and said, O oh my God, I am ashamed and blush to lift up my face to thee, my God, for our iniquities are increased over our head, and our trespasses grown up into the heavens. Since the days of our fathers have we been in a great trespass unto this day, for our iniquities Have we, our kings and our priests, been delivered into the hand of the kings of the lands, to the sword, to the captivity, to a spoil, and to confusion of face, as it is this day? Right? Same prayer. Right? So he's praying for these strange wives. Right? And the strange wives is these false doctrines that make us unclean. Right? Okay. So I just want you to see that there's three places where this prayer is made right ich wollte euch nur sehen lassen dass es eben diese drei orte gibt wo dieses gebet gebetet wird okay so last point i want to make in regards to this if you go to um, habakkuk chapter 1 der letzte punkt den ich noch in bezug darauf machen möchte ist wenn wir zu habakkuk 1 gehen Okay. Now remember, in the book of uh, Daniel, chapter 8, the angel says, how long, right? Denk so long shall be the vision, right? Denk daran, im Buch Daniel, in Daniel 8, da fragt der Engel, wie lang wird die Vision sein? Oder okay. And in Daniel chapter 12, we read the same thing, right? It's marking this point where... You see Christ in the water and the angels either side, right? In Daniel 12 konnten wir dasselbe sehen. Sie sehen im um, Christus in der Mitte und auf je, der jeweiligen Seite ein Engel. Okay, in Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 1. Habakkuk 1 vers 1. It says the burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. What's he doing? Was tut er? He's seeing something, right? Er sieht etwas. It says, O Lord, how long shall I cry and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Right? So what's he been shown? Was wird ihm gezeigt? Jerusalem being spoiled, right? Wie Jerusalem geraubt wird. And who does that? And wer macht das? Gog and Magog, right? Gog and Magog. He's seeing Jerusalem being ransacked, right? Er sieht eben, wie Jerusalem Okay. For verse 4. Therefore the law is slacked and judgment doth never go forth, for the wicked doth compass about the righteous. What are they doing? Was machen sie? S surrounding them, right? Sie umlagern sie. Therefore ju wrong judgment proceedeth. Behold ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days which ye will not believe, though it be told you. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not there. So he's telling you, I'm going to bring Gog and Magog to take a spoil and to take the prey, right? Er sagt ihnen also, dass ähm, er Gog und Magog nehmen wird, damit sie eine Beute und einen Raub nehmen. It says they are terrible and dreadful. What are they? Wie sind sie? Terrible and dreadful, right? Und okay, so this is Christ doing this through them, right? Das ist eben Christus, der das durch sie tut. Okay, because he's going to manifest his, his glory, right, through this punishment, right? Weil er wird seine Herrlichkeit durch diese Bestrafung manifestieren. Because, you know, if the Lord was to appear before us, we would just vanish, right? We would just turn into pink mist. Wenn der Herr einfach vor uns erscheinen würde, dann würden wir einfach vergehen. Wir würden aufhören zu existieren. And he's, he tries to show us this, right, that you can't stand before God by using these 
kingly powers to show them how dreadful it would be uh, if the Lord was to, you know, um, he, 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 I mean, it's, it's the, Satan doing this work, right? But it's the wrath of God, right? In measure, right? Also, er zeigt uns das durch diese irdischen Mächte, wie schrecklich das ist und dass man nicht vor ihm bestehen kann. Und es ist natürlich Satan, der dieses Werk tut und das ist eben der Zorn Gottes. Because the wrath of God is Satan doing it, right? Weil der Zorn Gottes ist Satan, der das tut. But Satan is only typifying the fire and the brimstone that's going to burn up him at the end, right? Aber Satan schattet nur den, das Feuer und den Schwefel voraus, ähm, dass ihn dann am Ende verbrennen wird. Okay, so Satan is just typifying the wrath of God. It's this dreadful and terrible God. Right? Also Satan schattet einfach den Zorn Gottes voraus, diesen schrecklichen und furchtbaren Gott. Okay, so anyway, this, uh, and if you just go down to verse 9, wenn wir zu Vers 9 gehen, they shall come up They, sh they shall come all for violence, their faces shall shut up as the east wind. So here's Babylon being likened unto this east wind, right? Here's Babylon, der mit diesem Ostwind verglichen wird. Okay, and the east wind at the end is radical Islam. Der Ostwind am Ende der Welt ist der radical Islam. Okay, so the east wind comes upon God's people, then the east wind comes upon Babylon. Der Ostwind kommt auf Gottes Volk, dann kommt der Ostwind auf Babylon. Right, and it's just typifying after the thousand years. Christ is this east wind. Right? Das schattet einfach voraus ähm, nach diesen tausend Jahren ist Christus der Ostwind. Right. He's this dreadful and terrible God. Er ist dieser schreckliche und furchtbare Gott. It says that he's a consuming fire. Right? Es sagt, er ist ein verzehrendes Feuer. Okay, anyway, so just go back to Daniel. Gehen wir zurück zu Daniel. So you can see that you have to go through the Bible and link all these things together and you can see when you do that it's easy to see that it's Mark and Daniel getting down because Nehemiah is praying day and night, right? Also, wenn man eben durch die Bibel geht und das alles zusammenbringt, dann kann man einfach sehen, dass es ähm, hier ist, wo äh, Daniel ist. It's easy to see where Daniel is because Nehemiah is praying day and night. Also, wo Dan also es ist einfach dann zu sehen, wo Daniel ist, ähm, weil dort betet auch Nehemiah Tag und Nacht. Right, how do we see that? Right. So, um, let's just go to verse 4 now and let's read through it. It says, I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants the prophets which speak in thy name to our kings, our princes and our fathers and to all people of the land. Okay, now I just want to show you this same thing. If you go to Luke 13, you place there. Zeigen, haltet euren Finger hier und geht zu Lukas 13. Mm -hmm. Not Luke 13. Um, Luke, Luke 24, excuse me. Also nicht Lukas 13, sondern Lukas 24. And this is the two men on the road to Emmaus, right? Verse 25. It says, Then said he unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. So what were they not doing? Was haben sie nicht getan? They were not obeying the prophets, right? Sie haben nicht den Propheten gehorcht. And this is why <coughs> Christ was separate from them, right? Und deswegen war Christus von ihnen getrennt. Okay, and then, then eventually he, he reveals himself to them, right, in this illustration. Dann in dieser Darstellung letztendlich offenbarte sich ihm. 
Okay, leads you down to the same point, right? Und das führt dich dann zu diesem selben Punkt. So they, they are in this mourning condition. They're all mourning, we've lost Christ, etc., etc. Sie sind alle in diesem klagenden Zustand. Sie klagen alle und sagen, wir haben Christus verloren und so weiter. Okay, but it was because of their lack of a belief, right? Was war wegen ihrem Mangel an Glauben. So, when you go back to Daniel 9 and verse 6, Geht zurück zu Daniel 9 und Vers 6, saying the same thing, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had spoken. Da right? sagte sie eben dasselbe, O oh, ihr Törichten, ähm, und langsam zu, ähm, im Herzen alles zu glauben, was die Propheten gesprochen haben. It says, Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants the prophets, which speak in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day, to the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near, that are afar off through all the countries whither thou hast driven them because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face to our kings, to our princes, to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his ways which he set before us by his servants the prophets. Yet all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us, and the oath that is written in the law of Moses. Leviticus 26, right? Das dritte Mose 26. Um, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him, and he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil for under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem as it is written in the law of Moses all this evil is come upon us yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us for the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth for we obeyed not his voice and now O Lord our God that has brought thy people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and has gotten thee renowned as at this day we have sinned we have done wickedly O Lord according to all thy righteousness I beseech thee let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from thy city, Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach to all that are about us. Now therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplications, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. Okay, so... Nehemiah. Why was Nehemiah praying before the king? Warum hat Nehemiah vor dem König gebetet? What was he praying about? Über was hat er gebetet? Okay, go, go back to chapter 1. Nochmal zurück zu Kapitel 1. Nehemiah. Verse 2. Verse 2. It says that Hanani, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Yes. So what's he praying for? Und für was hat er gebetet? Jerusalem. Yeah, what about it? For Jerusalem, and what's that with it? Okay, so he's praying because 
for the work to go forward to rebuild Jerusalem, right? Also, weil Jerusalem ist zerstört und er betet jetzt, ähm, damit dieses Werk Jerusalem wieder aufzubauen weitergehen kann. Right, because the people are already people are already back in Jerusalem trying to build the city, but he's praying because it's not going forward according to as it should be, right? Also die Leute sind schon ähm, wieder zurück in Jerusalem und ähm, bauen das schon wieder auf, aber er betet weil das Werk des Wiederaufbauens eben nicht so vorangeht, wie es sollte. Right? Yes. Okay, the point you have to see, the Sunday law, right? There's two separate works taking place simultaneously. Und ähm, im Sonntagsgesetz, da finden eben zwei äh, äh, Werke äh, gleichzeitig statt. Okay, Christ, what's he doing from temple cleansing to temple cleansing? Was macht Christus von Tempelreinigung bis Tempelreinigung? What's that? Okay, so what's that got to do with this? Right, he's, he's building the temple, right? Because he says, tear down this temple and in three days I will rebuild it, right? So the, there's a work of rebuilding going on, right? Das ein Werk des Wiederaufbauens, das Got to be understood spiritually. Das muss geistig verstanden werden. And there's also a progressive destruction going on, right? Da gibt es auch eine progressive Zerstörung, die stattfindet. So both these works, the destruction of Jerusalem and the rebuilding of Jerusalem, they're happening simultaneously, yes. right? Beides dieser Werke, die Zerstörung Jerusalems und der Wiederaufbau Jerusalems findet gleichzeitig statt. Okay. The rebuilding is, the, is those that are hearkening unto God and entering in to do this work. Der right? Wiederaufbau, das sind diejenigen, die auf Gott hören und die jetzt dieses Werk anfangen zu tun. Okay, they're in the belly, being sanctified. Sie sind in dem Bauch und werden geheiligt. Okay, and then the, the other group is the ones that are rebelling against God, disobeying Him, and they are progressively being destroyed. Right? Die andere Gruppe, sie ähm, rebellieren gegen Gott und sie werden jetzt progressiv zerstört. Right? Jehoiakim, taken into captivity for 70 years. Jehoiakim, right? er wird in die Gefangenschaft für 70 Jahre gebracht. Teach you down to Zedekiah, which is the destruction of Babylon, right? The uh, destruction of Jerusalem. Hinunter zu Zedekiah, was die Zerstörung von Jerusalem ist. Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin, Zedekiah, three oaths, right? Jehoiakim, Jehoiachim, und Zedekia, die haben drei Bündnisse geschlossen. Three times God's people rebel, right? Dreimal hat Gottes Volk rebelliert. Leads to the destruction, right? Das führt dann zu, zu der Zerstörung. Okay, but so, but on the other hand, from here you have you have Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes leading to the rebuilding, right? Aber andererseits hat man hier Kyrus, Darius und Artaxerxes was zum Wiederaufbau des Tempels führt. Right, so two different works going on simultaneously. Right? Zwei verschiedene Werke, die gleichzeitig stattfinden. Okay, and that's why you, you've got to understand these things spiritually, or you always just pervert these two different thoughts. Right? Deswegen muss man diese Dinge geistlich verstehen, weil sonst würde man diese zwei verschiedenen Gedanken verdrehen. So, Daniel recognized the destructive work that's come upon his people, right? Daniel er erkennt jetzt dieses zerstörerische Werk, was auf sein Volk gekommen ist. Okay, and he's praying for the rebuilding of Jerusalem, yes. right? Er betet jetzt für den Wiederaufbau von Jerusalem. Okay. So, um, um, where did we read up to? Three. To where? To verse three. In, 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 in Daniel chapter 9, yes. Verse 17. Also gehen wir wieder zu Daniel 9. Okay, verse 18. Jetzt Vers 18. It says, O oh my God, incline thine ear and hear, open thine eyes, and behold our desolations and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. O Lord, hear, O Lord, forgive, O Lord, hearken and do not defer, for thine own sake, O my God, for thy city and thy 
people are called by thy name. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, yet while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. So where are we now prophetically? At the end of the little box. Why are we here? Because the Daniel 1 verse 17, right? They were given wisdom in all visions and dreams, right? So it shows you that this prayer is this morning that goes here day and night all the way to the end, right? Was, um, die ganze Zeit hier bis zum Ende stattfindet. Okay, because we know Satan's going to come and try and deceive you ju here just before the end, right? Wir wissen, dass Satan hier kommen wird, um dich zu verführen, kurz vor dem Ende. Okay, but you have to keep going all the way to the end, right? Und du sollst weitergehen bis zum Ende. So, verse 22. Vers 22. Uh, and he informed me and talked when he said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. What is Daniel? Was ist Daniel? Beloved. beloved. So what is he? Yes. Uh, also, was ist son. His son, right? Son. This is my what? Beloved, beloved son, right? This is my beloved son. Okay, so it reaches the point now. He has this born again experience, right? And now he gives him the revelation, the, the bigger revelation, right? Because it says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophesy and to anoint the most holy. Right? So how long do they have to do that? Wie lange sollten sie das tun? 70 weeks. 70 Wochen. And 70 weeks is what? 70 Wochen is what? 490 years, right? So, as a whole, right, because Gabriel is now making him understand what these symbols mean. It's for us at the end of the world to understand this, right? So Gabriel, der erklärt ihm jetzt, was diese Symbole bedeuten, weil das ist für uns am Ende der Welt, dass wir das verstehen. Okay, so just remind us, go to Matthew 18. We looked at this last night. Verse 21. It says, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times. Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven, which is four hundred and ninety, right? Sieben mal siebzig, das ist vierhundertneunzig. Right, so go back to Daniel. Gehen wir right. zurück zu Daniel. Verse 24, mm -hmm. 9, yes. 24. 9, Vers 24. So, seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins. Right? How oft shall I forgive my brother? 490. Right? It's a symbol, right? Okay, it was meant to be understood symbolically. What does it mean? Right? And to bring in everlasting righteousness and seal up the vision and prophesy and to anoint the most holy. Right? So now it's going to 
break down this 70 week into portions, right? Und jetzt wird es diese 70 Wochen in Abschnitte aufteilen. Okay, so it says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks, the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Right? So where does the commandment go forth? Wo geht das der Befehl aus? The decree of Artaxerxes, right? Yes, the decree of Artaxerxes. Okay, so just go back to Daniel 8. Geht zurück zu Daniel 8. Verse 13. Verse 13. Remember, we're looking at it symbolically, right? Denk daran, wir schauen das symbolisch an. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint we speak, How long shall be the vision? Concerning the daily and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden under foot. What's the answer? What's the answer? The answer is from the going forth of the decree, right? The answer is from the ausgehen des Dekrets. Okay, because the 2300 began at the decree of Artaxerxes, right? So we took the, the 2300 and applied it symbolically and it goes from here to here, the Sunday law, right? Wir haben die 2300 genommen und sie symbolisch angewandt und das geht von hier bis hier, also im Sonntagsgesetz. Right, it's referencing the cleansing of the Temple, right? Es bezieht sich auf die Reinigung des Tempels. And Christ is cleansing the temple from temple cleansing to temple cleansing, right? Und Christus reinigt den Tempel von Tempelreinigung bis Tempelreinigung. Yes? Ja. Okay, so when you go back there, it's just telling you from when it's beginning, right? Und wenn man da zurückgeht zu Daniel 9, dann sagt es, wo es anfängt. Okay, Vers um, 25. Vers 25. Know therefore and understand that from the Sunday law, or from the going forth of the commandment, also, wisse, um, deswegen und verstehe, dass von diesem Sonntagsgesetz oder dem Ausgehen des Dekrets, to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The streets shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. What was Nehemiah praying for? Für was hat Nehemiah gebetet? This very thing, right? The walls was broke, broken down, Jerusalem, right? Genau für diese Sache, weil die, die Mauer war niedergebrochen in Jerusalem. Okay. So, what it does is it takes you to the... When you look at this, right? It says that at the 69th week, that's going to be complete, right? Das sagt, dass es dann an der 69. Woche ist, wenn es vollendet ist. So historically, where does the 69th week take you to? Und historisch gesehen, wohin bringt dich die 69. Woche? Takes us to the same place, right? Zu der Taufe, das bringt uns zu demselben Ort. Right? Because we just read that 70 weeks represents 490. It's where the Lord is going to forgive up to that point. Right? Wir haben hier gelesen, dass die 70 Wochen, diese 490 Jahre sind, wo, also das bringt uns zu dem Punkt, äh, oder in dieser Zeit, wo der Herr ähm, die Sünden vergibt. Right. Takes you to the end, right? Das That's bringt dich zu dem Ende. He doesn't forgive anymore because it's now the close of probation, right? Und er vergibt dort nicht mehr, weil es jetzt das Ende der Gnadenzeit ist. So, when you go to verse 25, he's now given you a different portion illustrating something different, right? Wenn man zu Vers 25 geht, dann zeigt er dir jetzt einen anderen Abschnitt und das stellt etwas anderes dar. But where does it take you to? Bis wohin bringt dich das? The same point, the same point right? To the baptism, right here. Zu der Taufe. So, the end of the 70 weeks brings you to the point, right? Where Christ is not going to forgive anymore, right? Also die 70 Jahre bringt dich zu dem Punkt, die 70 Wochen bringt dich zu dem Punkt, wo Christus nicht mehr vergeben wird. 69th week brings you to the baptism, right? Die 69. Woche bringt dich zur Taufe. Okay, right, verse 26. Vers 26. 
It says, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, right? It's talking about the 69th week here, right? What happens, what's it say happens at the 69th week? The cross, right? Okay. And, and you, you'll see this, it says, After three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, and the people of the prince shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. Now, the baptism. What does Romans 6 do? Puts the cross and the baptism together, right? So it brings everything that's just written there in verse 26 and sticks it at the same place as the baptism, right? Right, and then verse 27. It says, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week shall he cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation, and that determinant shall be poured upon the desolate. So he takes the one week, right, and he also uses it as a symbol. Right? Okay, so um, I was thinking how to uh, uh, apply that, but for instance, th there's the cross, right? Also, ich habe darüber nachgedacht, wie man das jetzt anwendet. You have 1260. Aber wenn man hier das Kreuz hat und hier die 1260. Okay, and then you have 1260. Und but dann hat man hier 1260. I'm not sure if it's got a different application to that. I have to look at it. But the point I want you to to see is that. These things have been split down because they're symbolizing different aspects of the Sunday law, right? Also, ich weiß jetzt nicht, ob man das so anwenden kann, aber ähm, ich möchte euch einfach sehen lassen, dass das so aufgeteilt ist in verschiedene Abschnitte, weil es verschiedene Aspekte im Sonntagsgesetz darstellt. Okay. So, um, and it basically just leads down to the, where the the, the the punishment comes upon the desolators, right? Those that have been destroying Jerusalem until they get punished, right? Which is the very next thing that happens after Jerusalem's been destroyed. Right? So Daniel's been given a vision of the time period of probation. Also Daniel wird eine Vision gegeben über diese Zeitspanne der Gnadenzeit. So also be given a vision of this great blessing where the baptism is going to take place. Und auch eine Vision über diesen großen Segen, wenn die Taufe stattfinden wird. The destruction of Jerusalem. Die Zerstörung von Jerusalem. And then the destruction of those that destroy Jerusalem on Babylon or Rome, right? Und dann die Zerstörung von denjenigen, die diejenigen, die Jerusalem zerstört also Babylon oder Rom. Right, see that? Stick, könnt ihr das sehen? Okay, so, um, just trying to think if there's any other, um, points that, I want to go into Daniel 10 yet and do that. Does it mean that it seals up the vision and the prophecy? Uh, yes, I, uh, I was, you're on about verse 24. Mm -hmm. um, I was also looking at that, trying to understand that, because uh, I'll just make you a point. If you go to uh, Revelation 10 and verse 4, Die Frage war eben, in Vers 24 sagt, dass es wird die Vision und die Prophezeiung versiegeln. Und dann gehen wir zu Offenbarung 10 und Vers 4. Because John, 
John is just typifying something at the end of the world, right? Weil Johannes schattet etwas am Ende der Welt voraus. And John is told here to go take the book out of his hand and, and eat it, right? Weil Johannes ihm wird gesagt, dass er dieses Buch aus ähm, der Hand des Engels nehmen soll und essen soll. And just as he's about to proclaim the seven thunders, he's told, seal up the book, right? It's verse 4. Und kurz bevor ihm gesagt wird, dass er die sieben Donner verkündigen soll, wird ihm gesagt, versiegle das. It says, and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not, right? It's for God's people. When they come to this point, they are the ones that's going to utter it, right? When it's... Yes. When Daniel is resurrected. Es ist für Gottes Volk, wenn sie zu diesem Punkt kommen, ähm, dass sie das dann aussprechen sollen. Das ist, wenn Daniel ähm, auferweckt wird. Because Daniel is told to seal up the vision until the time of the end, right? Bei dem Daniel wird gesagt, er soll die Vision versiegeln bis zur Zeit des Endes. Right? Same thing, right? Dasselbe. Okay, so when you go back to um, Daniel 9, Jetzt zurück zu Daniel 9 geht. That's the only place in Revelation 10, 4 that, I, that at least that I found that this vision being sealed up. Right? Das ist der einzige Ort in Offenbarung, ähm, wo eben, also das ich kenne, wo die Vision versiegelt wird. Okay, so, I... I for me, I still don't understand that what that means. Right? Because to anoint the most holy, that would be marking this same point, right? Okay, so the point is that it's it's all the whole the whole vision there, everything's pointing. To this point, right? Der Punkt ist, dass die ganze Vision, also alles weist auf diesen Punkt. Okay, there are all different events that are taking place there. Destruction of Jerusalem, destruction of Babylon, the baptism, the curse, etc., etc. Das sind alles dieselben Punkte, die dort stattfinden. Also ähm, Zerstörung Jerusalems, Zerstörung Babylons, ähm, die Taufe, den, der Fluch und so weiter. Could you explain again um, the point on verse 25? Of Artaxerxes, the beginning, like marking it at the Sunday law connection. In, in Daniel 8. Because Daniel 8 Because Daniel 8 begins right at the Sunday law. Daniel 8 fängt ja mit dem Sonntagsgesetz an. It takes you all the way through, right? Um, takes you all the way through to the end of the fourth, right? Bringt dich die ganze Zeit hindurch bis zum Ende des vierten. Okay, so that's what we were looking at. This breaking it down brings you all the way down to here, right? Das haben wir uns sehr angeschaut. Das bringt dich dann die ganze Zeit bis hierhin. So when you come to verse 13, wenn man zu Vers 13 geht, it says, Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which speak, How long? So how long shall be this work from, right? It says, how long shall be the vision concerning the daily and the transgression of desolation, which is the papacy. Right? So here's the daily, right? Right? And here's the transgression of desolation. And here's the übertretung der Verwüstung. So the answer is how how the question is how long will that is that going to last? Die Frage ist uh, wie lange wird das dauern? He says until 2300. Er sagt bis 2300. So the 2300 begins there and ends there. Also die 2300 fängt hier an und endet dort. It's symbolic, right? It's symbolic. And when you parallel it, Christ begins. First temple cleansing begins the work of cleansing the human heart, right? And he ends it right here when he says, your house is left unto you desolate. Right? Which is Ichabod. Right? So it's the end of the 490. Okay, because 
you go to 70 times 7 to forgive to confess your sins, right? Du hast 70 mal 7 um deine Sünden zu bekennen. Right, so it's, it's a parallel, right? Das ist eine Parallele. So he, when you go to Daniel 9, wenn du zu Daniel 9 geht, Verse 25, 25. It says, Know therefore and understand from the going forth of the commandment. So from the beginning of the 2300. Also von dem Ausgehen des Befehls, also vom Anfang der 2300. To restore uh, and build Jerusalem. And that's what Christ is doing. When he goes into the temple, he begins his work of cleansing the human heart. Restoring the temple. Also right? in Jerusalem wiederherzustellen und wieder aufzubauen. Das ist, wo, wo Christus hier anfängt, ähm, den menschlichen Tempel wiederherzustellen. So you have to know and understand when he begins that work, right? Du musst also wissen und verstehen, wann er anfängt, dieses Werk zu tun. Right? So, know therefore and understand that from the, when Christ begins to cleanse the human heart, you could just put it in those words, right? Unto Messiah the Prince. So where does the Messiah come? At the baptism. So it just gives you the start point to the end point, right? It says shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. That's 69 weeks, right? The street shall be built and the wall even in troublous times, right? So it's a time of trouble, right? It's telling you at the end, the streets and walls will be built. Because the wall is the law, right? Weil die Mauer it's going to be restored, right? Das wird wiederhergestellt werden. So basically at the end, he will have a spiritual temple rebuilt and the wall will be protecting them, right? Also, am Ende wird diese geistliche Mauer wieder aufgebaut werden und, ähm, oder die geistliche Straße und die Mauer wird sie beschützen. Right? And could then the same also be applied to the period from the final review to the final review? Because that's where we have this foundation building, right? D dif different work. Yes. Good. That's completely different. That's it's not. It's not begin. He's you're, you're being built, and you've got to mean, maintain that condition, right? It's, it's completely different. Also von finale Untersuchung bis finale Untersuchung, das ist eben ein anderes Werk, weil du wurdest jetzt wieder aufgebaut und du musst das jetzt aufrechterhalten. Remember, you're taken into the you're taken into the land there. You're to be a light. To the Gentiles, right? Wenn du hier in das Land gebracht wirst, sollst du ein Licht für die Heiden sein. So you, you have to mean this. This is to be this beautiful golden city that's that's illustrating uh, Christ to, to, to the people. Das soll now you have to basically shine. Yes, yes. Das soll diese wunderschöne goldene Stadt sein, die dann hervorscheinen soll. Also das, der Tempel wurde jetzt ähm, aufgebaut und soll jetzt ein Licht sein. Where does he say you put a candle? And wo sagt er, wo tust or the candlestick, should I say. On the top of a hill, right? Um, auf die Spitze eines and he Berges. also says you put a city on top of a hill, er right? Doch, du setzt eine Stadt auf den, äh, Spitze des Berges. Okay, so that's, the, that's when God's people are lifted up, you're this, this light to the a whole world, right? You're das the city on top of a hill. Das right? ist, wenn jetzt Gottes Volk erhöht wird, Sie sind jetzt diese Stadt, also dieses äh, Licht der Welt. Okay, symbols, not, not history and chronology. Right? Das sind Symbole, nicht Geschichte oder Chronologie. Vers 25. Was bedeutet das in Vers 25, dass es aufgebrochen wird in sieben Wochen und but the seven weeks obviously illustrates something, but I, I, I don't know exactly what it's point, but it doesn't matter. Seven and sixty-two takes you to the sixty-ninth week, right? Also, die sieben Wochen stellen etwas dar, aber ähm, das weiß ich gerade nicht, was es bedeutet, aber trotzdem, ähm, das bringt, sind ja dann 69 Wochen. Okay, so there's some, still some things in there I don't get, but I'm just pointing out the things that I, I do understand and that it's symbolic and it's referring to things that he's doing here in the Sunday Law Crisis. Also, um, sind immer noch Dinge, die ich nicht 
nicht verstehe, aber ähm, die Dinge, die ich verstehe, sind eben Symbole, die auf die Sonntagsgesetzkrise hinweisen. And this, this is the point I'm making, verses 24 down to verse 27 is the revelation that you get after Christ has revealed himself to you, right? Diesen Punkt möchte ich eben zeigen, dass eben Vers 24 bis 27 die Offenbarung ist, die du erhältst, nachdem sich Christus dir offenbart hat. Okay, but in order to receive that, what must you do? Aber damit du das erhalten kannst, was musst du tun? Yeah, you must humble yourself in the dust and be touched on, on the lips, right? Du musst seufzen und klagen und in den Staub gedemütigt, also dann selbst in den Staub gedemütigt werden, damit äh, er deine Lippen berühren kann. Okay, so we need to be pure in order to really understand those things in their full import, right? Wir müssen rein sein, damit wir wirklich diese Dinge in ihrer ähm, vollständigen Auswirkung verstehen. Right? Richtig. So, this evening, we will go to Daniel 10, and we will show that Daniel 10 is representing this last bit of, of the world. Right? Also, heute Abend werden wir uns Daniel 10 anschauen, und dann werden wir sehen, dass es eben diese ähm, letzte, dieses letzte Teil um, okay, so if we do that, sighing and crying and confessing our sins and keep seeking the Lord, then we will have a much deeper understanding of these things. Because remember, they are secrets, right? Weil denk daran, das sind Geheimnisse. And a secret has to be revealed. No man can understand those things, right? Und ein Geheimnis muss offenbart werden. Kein Mensch kann diese Dinge verstehen. That's why Isaiah 29 says it's a, it's a sealed book and they can't understand it, right? Deswegen sagt Jesaja 29, dass es ein verschlossenes, äh, versiegeltes Buch ist, das niemand verstehen kann. Right, because they refuse to acknowledge their sin, refuse to realize that they are totally perverting his word and therefore it stays closed up to them. Right? Weil sie weigern sich ihre Sünden zu bekennen und ähm, zu sehen, dass ähm, das eigentlich ein verschlossenes Buch für sie ist und ähm, deswegen ist es für sie versiegelt. Amen. Amen. Okay, still much that we have to understand. Right? Immer noch sehr viel, was wir verstehen müssen. Okay, let's close with Lass uns mit Gebet dass du uns hilfst, diese Bücher besser und besser zu verstehen. Und ich bete, dass du uns hilfst, dass wir dieses Werk tun, was du uns für diese Zeit bestimmt hast. Bitte gib uns Gnade und gib uns ein Herz, deinen Willen zu tun. May we consider these things also today as we go about our things. Mögen wir diese Dinge in Betracht ziehen, während wir um, an diesem Tag unsere Dinge erledigen. Ich danke dir und bitte in Jesu Namen. Amen.